it out. If you're just joining, we're walking through uh, one of my rental properties that I've never been in. Oh, Jaden, how much money to drink that water? Finding the value of distressed properties can be pretty much impossible. It's really hard to know what a house costs, if there's crap everywhere, if there's holes in the drywalls. There's no comparable house sales to find out what that house is worth, so you're just guessing, right? Wrong. There is a formula that you can use to find the exact value of distressed properties. Once you master that formula, you're going to be able to find out the value of a property, so then you can buy it and monetize it by either wholesaling it to somebody else who doesn't know the value, by fixing it up and flipping it and making a huge profit, or fixing it up and keeping it as a rental without using any of your own money. So let's walk through this gross house, let's make it quick, and let's teach you something about valuing distressed property so you can make a lot of money. I remember when I first started investing, I thought I got a deal if I paid less than the person who was selling the house was asking. Now it got me in a little bit of trouble, not a ton, I got pretty lucky, but just because you buy a house for less than the distressed seller or the wholesaler is asking does not mean you're getting a deal. I remember asking the agents I was dealing with, is this a deal? And they would say, I don't know, I know how much the house is gonna probably be worth when you fix it up, but I don't know how much you should pay now. So what we're gonna do in this video, we're gonna walk through this house. I'm gonna give you a rehab just based on my initial reaction to the condition of the house. And I'm gonna do that inside the formula that we're gonna talk about today. And that formula is the max allowable offer formula. The formula is ARV, what the house is worth fixed up, times 75%, minus repairs. Now let's walk through the house and I'll make that formula make a lot of sense because the minute that formula makes sense is the minute you will start to make a lot of money. Let's start at the beginning, which is always a good place to start with the ARV part of the formula. And then I'm gonna give you a pro tip on what to do with fridges in houses like this. So ARV stands for after repair value. This is a number that with practice you can get pretty accurate on. Figuring out the ARV has a little bit of subjectivity to it, but in general you should be able to find out what the house is going to be worth after it's fixed up. And you do that by the patented Faster Freedom 333 rule. You need to find three houses within a third of a mile that have sold in the last three months that are in similar condition and style of your house. This house right here is a three bed, one bath, around a thousand square foot house. So I need to find three three bed, one bath, thousand square foot houses that have sold within a third of a mile of this house. There's a bug on my eye. A third of a mile of this house within the last three months. Now what happens if you can't find three houses within a third of a mile that have sold in the past three months? You just gradually expand each of those parameters a little bit until you find three houses. You need three houses and if you have to go out a half a mile, you have to go out a half a mile. And if you have to go out four or five months, you have to go out four or five months. But just slowly expand those terms so that you can find three houses that are the same as your house. You cannot compare a three bed, one bath slab ranch, which is this house, to a four bed, two bath, 2,500 square foot, two story. They have to be almost the exact same square footage and the same bed and bath. Now, what you never ever ever do in a house like this is open a fridge like this. This house smells not very good. But if you open that, it's 10, 20, 30 times worse than what's going on in this house. I promise I have been there, done that. So I would just leave this fridge and just, if you're not gonna keep the fridge, just dump it, never open it, tape it shut, whatever you gotta do, don't open a fridge like that. All right, now let's kind of walk through a budget as we're getting into the rest of the formula. A kitchen like this, I would say is going to cost about seven, eight thousand dollars. It's a really, really small kitchen, a rental gray kitchen, seven, eight thousand dollars. Let's walk through a few more rooms. I'll give you some more numbers and then we'll go through the rest of the formula. All right, so let's get a little more of the budget out of the way and then we're gonna go in the bathroom and talk about the discount percentage part of the formula. So again, just kind of swing from the hip here, the flooring, whether you do LVP or carpet, in a house like this is probably gonna cost somewhere between four and $5,000. Looking at the paint, it's probably gonna be pretty similar, maybe four grand for the paint. All the windows are old and original to the house, 1950s, 1960s when this house was built. So we're gonna go ahead and replace all those windows for about $3,000. And the fixtures, we're talking light fixtures in and outside the house, we're gonna put $2,000 in for that. So we're building the budget, we'll recap it obviously and plug it into the actual formula. Now let's head to the bathroom and let's talk a little bit about the discount percentage part of the formula. All right, so we're in the bathroom. Let me tell you my quick thoughts on the budget after we go over the discount percentage formula. So you're taking ARV times 75% is generally what most people use right now. 
I'm not a mathematician, but in layman's term, that's giving you a 25% profit margin based on what you're going to sell the house for in the future minus all the repairs. So if you want to pay less for the house and get a better deal, multiply the ARV times 70%. So you're building that 30% difference in to make more profit. And if it's a little more competitive of a deal and you're confident in your numbers, then you can do it times 77%, times 80%. You probably don't wanna go over 80% because 20% profit's probably the minimum you want. It allows you to build in profit when you sell it, but also if a bank's gonna refinance you with the Burr's method at 80% of the after repaired value, you're going to want to be all in less than 80% of the after repair value. So that's when you're gonna to wanna to do it at 75 to 77% to make sure to build in enough equity so that you can refinance and get all your money back plus interest to pay back your initial private money lender and hard money lender. And if I'm talking some lingo that sounds foreign to you, check out this video up here where I walk through the Burr's method so you understand that refinance step and understand how I've been able to buy 282 rental properties without using any of my own money. All right, onto this budget that we're building. This bathroom is pretty gross. I offered the guy holding the camera right now. What if I gave you $1,000? Would you drink a sip of that water? Oh, no, hell no. $1,000? I'm, I'm who dead. On here, who on here would take a shot glass of that water and drink it for $1,000? So let me know in the comments if you would take $1,000 to take a shot, ounce and a half shot of that water. I'm not even gonna open this up. All right, anyway, so this bathroom, let's say, is going to be about $3,000. It's a small bathroom. I'm assuming we're gonna keep this, replace the surround, toilet. There's some water damage down there. So $3,000 should be enough to make this bathroom pretty nice. Now let's quickly walk through the bedrooms and I'm gonna round out the rehab budget and then we're going to plug in the formula of this house into this max allowable offer formula we've been talking about. And there's a few hidden costs that most people do not put into the last part of this formula, the repair part. Let's head in. All right, so this repair part of the budget is probably the hardest thing to get a grasp of because in general, I'm just throwing repair numbers out there. They're pretty close to accurate, but everybody's gonna rehab a little bit differently. But also there are some hidden things in there that people do not include in the rehab part of the repair budget of the formula. When you put in your repair part of the formula, you have to put, and this is a, a golden spoon. There's several of them over there. We're gonna take this to the pawn shop, see if they're real made in China. All right, so what you need to include in the repair budget is all of your costs from closing on the purchase to closing on the sale or closing on the refinance, however you're handling the project. That includes utility costs. You own the property, so you're going to have to pay water and sewer and trash and electric and gas if there are those things. So you're gonna have to pay those while you're rehabbing the property. You're going to have to have rehab insurance on the property. The property is going to be insured. Also, you're going to have short-term money costs, whether it be private money lenders or hard money lenders. Include those hard costs in your repair budget. And then finally, you're going to have to pay taxes to the county or the city or whoever you pay taxes to in that area for the time you own the property. If it's a six month rehab, you need to take the property taxes for the entire last year and divide it in half. And that's how much taxes you're gonna to have to pay for the property. So just in general, just be extra careful and include all of your costs. And if you're gonna be paying agents 6% on the buy and sell side to sell it, include that in your repair costs. So you're making sure to get a real profit at the end of your max allowable formula. So just tidy up that and just get all of your costs. I may have missed a few, but whatever costs you're incurring, everybody does things a little bit differently from close on purchase to close on sale or close on finance, include every single cost in that repair formula. And if you do that, and if you're right on your ARV and you have a conservative 75% discount percentage and you are including everything in that repair, you should not ever really lose money. You might not make as much as you want, but if you're getting good at the tail end and the front end of this formula and you're conservative, you will make money every single time. All right, let's talk a little bit about the budget and then let's head outside. I'm gonna wrap this all up and include the exterior part of the budget. In here, doors, handles, we're gonna say a thousand bucks. There's only a few doors in here are gonna need to be replaced. You might be able to paint them, but in general, let's replace them and replace the hardware. And then there is some mold in the house that doesn't look horrible. It looks like surface mold to me. I would put in $2,000 dollars just to be safe. If you're unsure about how much mold is in a property, definitely get a mold remediator in there to give you a quote, but I'm pretty confident a couple thousand dollars will clear this house up. Let's head outside, wrap it all up. All right, let's talk about the exterior budget now. It just, 
It smells so nice out here, doesn't it? We should have done the whole video out here. All right, so the exterior is not in horrible shape, but it pretty much all needs to be replaced. That is asbestos siding behind us. We already did the windows. You can usually just put stuff over asbestos siding. If you're not like removing it or repairing it, you can just seal it up. So we're going to put $5,000 to wrap the rest of this house up in siding. The roof and gutters, we're gonna put $5,000 in for both of those. There's some things on the ceiling. We'll get rid of the roof or we'll get rid of those, uh, th those dishes. And as you can see up there, the uh, electric mass is actually 10 feet up. So it's high enough up. So you don't have to mess with the electric. The systems are fine. The HVAC is a little bit older, but it's not in bad condition. As long as it gets serviced, it doesn't need to be replaced. Same with the electric and the water heater. So all the systems are actually surprisingly in pretty good shape in this property. We're gonna put $1,000 in the budget just to do light landscaping up front. And also maybe a couple different branches getting removed. And then finally, we're gonna put $1,000 in the budget to just take probably one big dumpster load of stuff inside the house and get rid of this. It's nice to have a little shed sometimes, but this is a not repairable condition. So we're gonna go ahead and dump this shed in. All right, let's sit down now, wrap all this up in a formula and tell you what I would pay for this house. And you can start to do this on other houses that you're analyzing that you may not even be buying. Practice makes perfect and perfect makes you a lot of money. All right, let's go over the budget and plug it into the formula here. So quickly to recap, kitchen, we set seven to eight grand, paint four grand, fixtures two grand, flooring four to five, windows three, door hardware one, bathroom three, roof and gutters five, siding five, mold two, landscaping a little bit of tree 1000 and then clean out 1000 as well so that's 39000 you know with the plus or minus is a little bit 39000 you definitely need to do a minimum of a 10% buffer. That's gonna give you $44,000 as your actual repair budget. All right, now that we know the hard cost of the actual repairs, we have to get some of those holding costs that I mentioned earlier. This is a great rental property, so I'm not gonna build in realtor fees, but taxes on this property for the four or five months we're gonna be owning it during the rehab, let's say would be about $1,000 paying a private lender their money plus interest let's say five thousand dollars would be safe and then utilities and insurance should be a ton of thousand dollars in there as well so our rehab plus the fluff plus our holding cost is fifty one thousand dollars now i know how much this house is worth because we own 47 or 48 in this neighborhood this is once fixed up a hundred eighty five thousand dollar house all day so that is our after repair value the initial part of the formula so one hundred eighty five thousand times 75 percent to be safe to get our 80 percent from the bank minus fifty one thousand dollars in repairs gives us a price of eighty seven thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars so that is your max allowable offer meaning if you're shop this property if you're talking to the homeowner however you're getting this property across your plate and running your numbers you don't want to pay more than eighty seven seven fifty to make this property make sense and to be able to make a profit to flip it potentially a little bit of wholesale and to keep it as a rental without using any of your own money so obviously try to get a little bit less you can play that whole game with let's try to get it for 75 grand to be safe that's fine you're super safe on that you'll make a lot of money have a lot of equity but if there's somebody else in the deal they're using a formula similar to this and you're probably going to get beat out so just have that in mind know the seller know the wholesaler know the real estate agent know how much competition you're going to have and something like this just knowing what i know being very confident in the numbers i would offer something like 82 83 grand give myself a little bit of room to come up if need be and if you're going to wholesale you can do all this and just minus out your wholesale fee so that is the max allowable offer formula it's something you need to practice on a daily basis to get good at it. and once you're good at it you can put confident offers out on property and have a very very small risk of losing any money you're probably going to be on the positive on every single deal hope this helps if it did the bugs out of my hair make sure to give this video a like subscribe i would really appreciate that see you on the next one